What are they doing with their time and who is supporting them? These men who won't work. They're playing video games, of course. Hope stated that even though men were spending more time at home during the pandemic, they contributed even less to the household. They more time on average than ever just playing video games and consuming content online. And who's taking care of them? Women, their moms, their aunts, their cousins, their sisters, their grandmas. This is why we're seeing so many stories like this with adult males involved. Are the XYs becoming more violent or is their violence being taken more seriously now that it's not being directed at their wives and their girlfriends? A lot of people are saying, oh, there's been an uptick in male violence and whatnot, and maybe there's been a slight increase, but the truth is it's just shifting. Men were always violent towards their wives or girlfriends, just nobody cared. Quick us pew pewing out in California. Normally this would have gotten zero attention because this man just unalived his estranged wife. That wouldn't even make the news, but he did it in her classroom, injuring and uh, unaliving some of her special needs students. So people cared. Oh, it's a school pew pewing. Oh, how do you get into the school? You don't care about women. We really care about people who are around them who might be injured. Anytime a man pew pews up the beauty parlor or the woman's job, all of a sudden y'all care. I have so much to say about this and I could not agree more. I'm going to tag both of those videos um, because this is absolutely what I've been thinking. I have been asked by countless people to talk about the um, punching in the face stuff in New York. Uh, I mean, it's scary, but also like, what's new? I, want, I don't want to diminish the seriousness of that, but I, please do not let that scare you into staying at home because that's exactly what they want to do. I know my mutual Therese has talked about this too. Like, I, okay, I, I, I need women to understand that no man punching you in the face, no man in public will ever be as dangerous as the man that you let into your home and sleep with and you trust your bank account with and you just trust in your home. No man. Statistics back me up on this. I'm not just blah, 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 okay? None of these men are nearly as dangerous as the men that you're gonna go on a date with. The men that are gonna earn your trust. They're playing the long game. Men have been literally uh, unaliving outright or through our nervous system or through financial abuse by cutting off our resources. They've been doing this to us for ages and they do it more than they don't do it. Do you understand? They have been graping their wives forever. And I'm also gonna tag one of my other mutuals, Candace Kelly, who's been writing a book about how most of our grandmothers were graped by our grandfathers. And a lot of them were child brides. And even though she focuses um, specifically on um, black women, in some of her videos, she's been saying that like just comments from so many women she's uh, has noticed is that this, this, this seems to be like a common experience. And as Bourbon Bougie, another one of my mutuals says, the, the dust is global. The dust is global. It may look a little different or a lot different, but at the same time, these men, they're, they're unaliving us and they have been for a while. And um, you should assume all of them are going to unalive you until proven otherwise. Now I'm gonna go into the, the matricide in a second because these men, these lay the nail crisis, uh, women are, st are starting to realize that their peace and their life and their finances and their happiness is way more important than like getting married. We're not buying it anymore. We're not, we're not doing it because m mom or grandma wants us to. We're not doing it because we're, we're, we realize that that stupid picture with the white dress is not worth the stress of a man. That a funeral, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the wedding day is actually the funeral for most women in terms of their lives being over. If it's not their like pre-funeral to their actual funeral, it is literally the end of their freedom, the end of their autonomy because everything is about him now. The wedding may, day may be about her, but everything after that day is all about him. Now, I know I, I say this as a married woman. That's not my experience in my life, but uh, I didn't get married until 42 and I have never wanted to get married. And the, and the reason why I became so strict in my dating life and so like cutting men off at the first red flag is because I almost died because of a man. And even though I'm a rock climber, uh, was a backpacking guide, traveled solo, hung off of cliffs, had like literally like uh, seen two people drown in front of me on the river that I worked on. 
You know, I've been in so many life and death situations. Nothing has ever been as life threatening as letting a man into my bed and into my heart. Not even in my bed. Hookups on Tinder with complete strangers were never as terrifying as dating a man. He played the long game. And a lot of these husbands are playing the long game. And so please don't think that, yes, men in public spaces are dangerous and they are probably going to become more dangerous, but do not let anyone ever convince you that punching in the face is anywhere near as dangerous as tying your life to one of these dudes. Who you don't think was capable of punching you in the face, just wait. And again, if he can never lay a hand on you and can literally kill you slowly through your, your nervous system, stress, inflammation, cortisol. My mutual Lorraine talks about it all the time. I hope I remember to tag all these people because me and my mutuals have been talking about this for a long time. The nervous system. I can't tell you how many, every time a woman dies before her husband, I side eye him. Did you unalive her? Because I'm pretty sure you probably did with your stress. All of these men are financial abusing, gold digging, hobo schedules, even if they have money until they prove otherwise. They literally exploit and take and take and take. They're parasites. And these are not even the violent ones. These are the good ones. And so women are starting to realize like, wow, we get nothing from this arrangement. I don't want to do this. And so the men, the lonely man crisis is happening. And how are men responding? How are the thought leaders responding? Which are just like inch smells with degrees. Like this douchebag, I can't stand this dude. I can make 10 videos about this man. Skunk gun man. Who's not, who literally doesn't have, he has no credentials. He's not a sociologist. He's like, what? He's a grifter, if you ask me. <laughs> the, these violent men, you better watch out. There's nothing more dangerous than a broke, lonely man. Well, sorry. And, and yet, the, and then the point, and then it's like, oh, they're such victims because women are so successful. Blah. But you know what? Go, go make yourself dateable, man. But he never talks about emotional intelligence or any of that stuff. He's like, go earn more money. Go to the gym. Fuck you, Scott. And then you have this D-bag. I hate him even more. The like, uh, the, the crying artsy sensitive version of Andrew Tate right here. Who says stuff like violent attacks happen, happens when men do not have partners. Uh, and society needs to work to make sure that those men are married. I don't want to marry these men. You marry them, Jordan. The cure for that is monogamy and forced monogamy. But not for him. Just for her. We know that that's what he means. He's not going to say it, but that's what he means. You stay in the home with this dude and then he'll also run out on you and probably leave you anyway and make you sick. And then also fork all these other women and then not use protection and then give you an STI. Because believe it or not, monogamy does not protect you. These men are literally giving their wives uh, diseases. Remember Andrew Huberman? I just, he wasn't married to this woman. But he gave her, God, they're, okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. Sorry. They're unaliving us during our sleep or lack thereof because they see us literally as batteries, like a dock, a, charge, a charging station. And they just trick and trick and take. Even when we're sleeping, they're sucking the life out of us. Sleep that deprivation is one of a, a very common tactic of abusers, even if they never touch you. So not only are young, um, unmarried, child-free women the happiest demographic, look at this, women over 60 who are single, happy, 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 happy. So a lot of these men are finding themselves single, uh, the, the, the gray divorce. So if you got young men who are single and alone, and you've got Middle-aged men who are single and alone because a lot of women are, are like, you know, especially after the pandemic are like, you don't do anything. You actually do less than I thought. And then older women are leaving. I'm going to get into that in a minute. What's going to happen? Where do these men go? This is when they move in with their daughters, their daughter-in-laws, their sister, their mother. It's women. It's women taking care of these men. And guess what? These men are unaliving those women. And what's happening is that when there's no one left to take care of them, then they start unaliving perfect stranger. And then they make headline news, like Cecilia was talking about. Nobody cares when they hurt us. They don't care if they hurt their kids, but especially their wives. 
They only maybe care if they unalive her, but even then they barely do. And like Cecilia was saying, a lot of them will do everything but unalive them because God forbid they no longer have someone doing all this labor for them. They'll, they'll, they control how much they harm you and scare you. And then they'll unalive you uh, when they find someone else, like that dude in Colorado who put his children, dead children, in oil pipes or whatever. So there are just endless cases. I, I, I don't even know what the percentage is of how many of these mass unalivings start with DV and the wives or girlfriends warn them and they warn them, they warn somebody, they try to warn someone, no one listens and then they just unalive an entire stadium or whatever, or try to. I wanna pull a couple of examples of this and to prove the point that Cecilia was making that nobody cares what they do to these women in the homes until it, it, it spills out into the public sphere. And then people are like, oh my God, dude. Remember this dude, the pilot who flew into a mountain and unalived, how many people was it? 149 people plus himself. Now I did a video on this, um, I don't know, like a year ago, maybe less, because I did a deep dive on this dude. He was abusive. His girlfriend had tried to warn them that this man's not safe. He was a control freak. He was controlling how she, how her appearance. He was also a marathon runner, mm, just saying. She tried to warn them that this dude's unhinged. Nobody listened. And then all these people died. They died, you know, hitting a mountain. I can't imagine such a horrifying death. And you know what happened to her? That she was run out of town. Apparently her and her whole family had to leave the town because everyone blamed her. The same way Scott Galloway and Jerry Pearson keep blaming women. Uh, like it's our problem to fix and like we caused this. We won't marry these psychos. So it's our fault when they go out, right? Or right? No, but you know, they blamed her. She tried to warn them. She didn't have to, she tried to, and they blamed her for what he did because she broke up with him. She broke up with him and then next thing you know, he unalyzes all these people and they blame her for escaping a violent relationship as if it is her responsibility to take care of everything. He but of course, that's how, that's, that's how we think about girlfriends, wives, mothers, all of it. I also did a video last year on, you know, the bomb in Nashville on Christmas Eve. Nashville's my hometown. I knew a lot about this case because um, it's my hometown, okay? And I dug into this a lot. I'll try to remember to link the video. The, the girlfriend tried to warn them. Again, always they're like, ah, uh, he seems dangerous. And they're like, they, they tried to send her to like a mental institution, if I remember correctly. Because they're like, look at this crazy lady. She reported that he had talked frequently about military and bomb making. And so the, the lawyer was speaking on her behalf because she had a lawyer. And of course, the police, ACAP, they're like, we don't know what to do. What were we supposed to do? They did everything they could. There was a call for service and a lady with two pew pews who needed care. So like, what are we supposed to do? Blah, blah, blah. And before her, they had never been on their radar. Women try to put these dudes on y'all's radar and you don't care. They like, and what really happened is she called them, they came over and she's like, I don't want these pew pews in this house anymore. Why? She's probably afraid. You wanna be um, with a dude who's building a bomb and have pew pew, like, oh my God. And then you know what happened? They put out a $250,000 reward. And then there was another reward for anyone information leading to the bomber or the bomber's identification. She did that. She just handed it over right to them after this happened because they didn't listen to her in the begin with. And then she had to sue. I still don't know what happened. She had to sue because they didn't want to give her the money, even though she literally did what they asked. It's, it's, it was in all these news outlets. Why? To make her look petty. To make her look like a gold dig. When really, at a great personal risk to herself, she came forward in good faith because they said they would do this. You know, now her name. Do you know, do you know how many, do you know how much, like I said, with that pilot's ex, like Cecilia's video talks about, when someone comes forward and says anything, they find out who is, a who is dating these men, they get targeted. Why didn't you keep your man in line? What, like all this stuff, great personal risk. She just wants financial compensation because I'm sure she's been, as a woman online who didn't do that, and I'm just talking, 
I cannot imagine the amount of hate she gets. The least they can do is pay her for all the therapy she's got to get and the work she's probably missing dealing with this stuff, helping them out. God! But now let's get to what happens when women are not enabling these men anymore, refusing to marry them and put our own lives at risk. What's happening? They're moving in with mom. If their sister won't take them or someone else. And then we have this crisis that's going underreported and not and not talked about enough. This is on the rise and it's huge. These sons are moving in with their mothers and then inflicting the violence that they would have done on their wives and children on mom. I highly suggest you read that whole article and I've already done a video about it like a year ago and it talks about the intersection of all this. Mothers are facing multiple interconnected inequalities including ageism, racism, sexism, and patriarchal in a patriarchal society. And then there's also less services these mothers and grandmothers are left as the last woman standing. Oh, that like hits, that hits so hard. When no one else will put up with these men, it's their, their own mothers and grandmothers who literally risk their lives bringing these dudes into the world. And then these sons take them out. This is an example of institutionalized state failure to protect them and as vulnerable citizens, right? Because you've got women who are older, so they are less, uh, they're more vulnerable because they're more frail. They have all, ki all kinds of autoimmune diseases because of men they maybe were dating or married to and all the trauma that they've been inflicted, has inflicted on them by men in their lives in general. The threat of violence, the financial abuse, and a lot of women who are older are then sick uh, they have disabilities. May maybe they are financially strapped even more because they are relying on, you know, smaller and smaller pensions and social security and stuff. Like, and a lot of them are also taking care of their grandkids and all kinds of crap because everything gets thrown at women. Everything. That women never get to rest. I swear to God. Even when you don't have children, you, like, women just never get to rest. It's a revolutionary act not taking care of somebody who has who would never do the same for you because i think we need to take care of each other but i'm talking about men who would never do the same thing for us that we do for them on the one hand mothers are given too much responsibility for the care of their sons in a way that you wouldn't ask of a victim of abuse in a different context right like at least if you're dating or married to these men which is already so hard to get out i as i know this as a survivor totally different stigma if you're the mom you're expected to tolerate so much more because people also don't believe that sons would hurt their moms wrong on the other these women are very marginalized in one cause in one case the mother had installed padlocks inside the house so she was because she was so frightened and another the son was taken off medication without uh, consulting or telling the mother shame and stigma add to the reasons why this abuse is hidden if you raise a child who has these sorts of problems society judges the mother and then there's the mother's loyalty to the son because of her own patriarchal conditioning right mothers are uh, like they, they yeah, we know this mothers will treat their sons so different than their daughters so many mothers would never do for their daughters what they'll do for their son they said there will be thousands more women behind this mat matricide statistics who, who are living unseen in daily fear. And this is the tip of the iceberg. And then also keep in mind that something that would, would not like fatally injure a, a woman my age or younger, it, you know, all you gotta do is like knock over grandma. She breaks a hip. She never comes out of the hospital. Like, you know, you know how like when the older women are, the more like they bruise or just people in general. And then coercive control legislation doesn't even consider adult family violence. It's not easy to remove an adult from your, an adult child from your home. You have to live with the son while you're trying to make him homeless and that escalates the risk, right? Imagine, okay, we know how entitled men are and how they get so mad when their girlfriends, wives, or even strangers say no to them. Imagine, imagine their own mother being like, get out. Imagine the king baby, prince baby, how angry that would make him. His own mother says, no, please do not let these men move in with you. Please do not let these men move. They will never leave. They will never leave. This could literally be the most life-threatening um, decision of your, of, of your life. Maybe, you know, you didn't remarry. Maybe you never got married, you know? Maybe you just didn't, like, didn't care about men and had your celibacy. And then um, your stepson, your son, of, of your, your nephew, who has nowhere else to go, you let these men in your house, you can't get them out. Please think before you let them move in. And then look at these statistics. 
Older victims are also more likely to have a disability. Victims age 61 and older are much more likely to experience abuse from an adult family member or a current intimate partner than people under 60. This is, this is big, but we're not talking about it. So here's the thing, even when these men move in, uh, a lot of them will um, move in saying they're gonna help, right? These sons, these nephews, uncle, brother, I'm gonna help. Let me show you, let me tell you, I mean, you probably didn't have, probably figured this out on your own. But when men come in and move in as caregivers, they've been proven to be more about like doing the job than actually caring for the human. So in this thing uh, about Alzheimer's, for instance, this is why, you, honestly, if you can afford it, it might be better to send uh, mom to a memory care center will she be taken care of better than dad taking care of her. Unless dad just loves her so much and has always really cherished her, it, this is what we're looking at. A study on caregiving found that older men in their study took a gendered masculine approach to caregiving for their wives with Alzheimer's. Specifically, the authors noted that men approached the role as caregiver with an occupational mindset. For these men, caregiving was a job with tasks and responsibilities they could master. They tended to prioritize the job of caregiving over their wives' feelings. Shocker. If you've ever worked with men in general, this is not a surprise. But you'd think with their wives they'd be more gentle. Now, nope. men times sometimes enforced, enforced compliance, such as using force or, or coercion to get their wives to take a shower or active restraint. Listen to this such as one man buckling his wife into the car to prevent her from wandering while he mowed the lawn. Though women caregivers face the same sort of challenge, I would argue even more because you're dealing with a man who's like twice as big as you. It is so dangerous when women take care of men um, because, I mean, I took care of my dad some when he was all, and he kept falling. I had to call the um, fire department to come pick him up. And, and then when we were on family vacation, he fell and me and Annie, my friend who is like a helicopter ski instructor. We're both very strong women. We could not get this man up off the ground. It, it is like, it is so dangerous for women to care for men, but they do it all the time. And what they're not doing is buckling them in the car and restraining them with so, so much violence and lack of care. I mean, some are, I'm sure, okay? Like what? These women care to face the same sort of challenges um, like their husbands not wanting to shower and they avoided the strategies used by men because they did not want to further threaten their husbands. <sighs> These findings suggest that older men and women have gendered strategies for coping with stressors in life. As stressors become more out of control, like multiple health problems, some people, particularly older men, may rely on rational extremes of their gender identity in order to take uh, control of problematic situations. And this often ends, le leads to violence. Some will resort to extreme physical violence, such as unaliving an attempt to solve the, pro solve the problem for a, a woman who needs care. And this is if they even stay. We know that men are six times more likely to just leave if she gets sick. Like they're not even gonna do the caretaking to begin with and then those who do stick around do crap like this. In addition, uh, mental health problems, excessive alcohol consumption, Shocker, because men and their escapism and their bad habits and financial strains because they've been wasting the family's money as I've been talking about with their hobbies and their gambling and their addiction and their just impulse, lack of impulse control or refusal to have impulse control, more like it. They may exacerbate the problem even more. And then you have the generational norms too, right? Like my generation, I'm Gen X, so we're, you know, <laughs> We're still not that much different than boomer. Then you have millennials, right? And as we get younger and younger, women are putting up with less and less of this crap. The ones who don't fall into the like trad wife pipeline because the internet has convinced them that like let men control all the money. Don't do that. That's literally the trad wife, stay at home mom, different. Please don't come in my comments. People that get so offended. I'm not talking about stay at home mom. I'm talking about trad wife. I gotta make a whole video on that because people seem to get mad when I talk about this and they're thinking I'm talking about something different. Anyway, generational norms. Like, like boomers do not like talking about stuff, okay? Do you have boomer parents? I do. They don't like talking about things. They don't like to air dirty laundry, right? I'm a white woman from the South, so it's even worse there sometimes, I think. You know? <laughs> fake, 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 hiding all kinds of things behind and so women are like, they don't want, they don't, they're not, they're not gonna leave their partners of like 40, 50 years because first it looks bad. Second of all, they feel like 
It's a generational thing. And they don't want people to know that they've been actually dealing with this maybe for a long time, but maybe not. Because the other thing, and Cecilia Regina did a great video on this too, long time ago, was that a lot of times there will be something that starts the abuse. That's why women don't want men to retire. They do not want these men at home unemployed. Men are at the worst versions of themselves when they are unemployed. Whatever's going on with them, put them unemployed and they're just like, it's like times a hundred, unless they're very disciplined and know how to handle that. So when they get retired, if they get an injury, um, they come down with a, a sickness or you know maybe they can't get it up anymore. Something that makes them shame spiral. Guess who's gonna deal with that shame? Not him. He's not gonna deal with it. He's gonna take it out on whoever's closest to him, whoever's most loyal to him, whoever he has power over, which is gonna be the woman in his life or the children, but especially the woman if they're retired. And that's why you have um, so much domestic violence of older couples. These men are even more insufferable when they don't have a purpose in life and they haven't been building friendships and community. Like I talk about in the Harper's Men Have No Friends, Women Bear the Burden piece. That was a big one. These women are literally waiting for these men to die, to go and go on a cruise with all their girlfriends because some of these men are so worthless. They don't even grandparent much. They never parented. They don't even grandparent. They just watch TV. Or they're golf men and they end up creating golf widows or whatever you call. You know, like they're either gone all the time doing the old man stuff or they're at home all the time. Uh, lonely, bored, moody, angry, and taking it out on her because they have nothing better to do. So why does this go so underreported? These either, you know, uh, abuse from a, a partner or from a son. Retirement and disability, both of those often render um, elderly individuals financially unstable. They may be afraid of losing their health care. They may be uh, just physically incapable of taking care of themselves, afraid of being homeless, and they don't maybe don't have many other options. Look at this. Globally, the reported prevalence of intimate partner violence experienced by older ranges, older women ranges from 16.5 to 54.5. I know that's a very large <laughs> window, but Obviously, it's going to be worse in some uh, cultures than others. And intimate partner violence with older women is under-researched and not talked about enough. They always talk. They also talk about the barriers to getting help. <gasps> A lot of times, this stuff comes up. The the abuse starts or gets worse because she's in perimenopause. Oh my gosh, this scares me. Uh, I am thick in perimenopause. I'm going to make videos on it later on. But I'm mm. perimenopause is a very hard time for women and anyone who has the, the, the baby making parts. Uh, I feel insane. I feel absolutely insane all the time. So perimenopause, retirement, when children leave home. And yet, despite all this, baby booners are going it alone. There's more gray divorce. Now, some of this is because these old men want to uh, create a whole new family with some young chick. Do not marry old men. Please do not marry old men. Please. But a lot of times it's the women initiating this because they don't actually want to sit around and wait for him to die because they realize maybe I'll die first. And then like, what was all this for? They say that this is actually going to climb dramatically in the coming decades. So we got not only a young male lonely crisis, we got an old man lonely crisis. We got an all age range lonely male crisis. The men who are actually married are going to be like, ooh, because... Uh, it's finally going to be normalized to not be married. And also because of economic gains um, from women, you know, like my mom's generation, you know, they could, they had more financial freedom because they could actually own homes and stuff. Credit cards, better access to birth control, uh, abortion, no fault divorce. All these things are trying to take away for a reason. Don't link up with these men because they're trying to make it harder and harder to get rid of their babies and to get rid of them. So we've been seeing like Dipper Gore was like, I'm out. Justin Trudeau's wife, I'm out. Like all these women are like, done, right? This one divorce attorney was like, I had one client tell me, I don't want to die next to that man. I'm out. <laughs> and one of the things that has been leading to this is uh, the differing perspectives between men and women on um, ar around the pandemic. Masking, vaccination, politics. These men are getting ra radicalized. And like I said in the beginning of this video, what are these men who are not working doing? They're online doing nothing but consuming things to make them more angry and blame anyone but themselves. And I can't tell you how many women who were like, if I die in this pandemic, it's going to be because of my husband. So many husbands actively put their wives and their children's lives in danger. I'm not saying women didn't do this too, but I heard this from so many women being like, I really hope I don't get COVID. And if we get it, it's going to be because of him because he's so careless and selfish. He doesn't even care if he gets it and gives it to me and I die because I have an autoimmune disease. You know, I heard that. It was very disturbing. The only reason why they're not divorcing more is because of lack of affordable housing. But that's why a lot of women are starting to do like the golden girls thing. 
You know, rather have a roommate with a woman than live with that man ever one more day. And even women in this article are like, no matter who she meets, will never live with anyone. That man again. She says anyone, but some people don't have that luxury. So it is concerning that the punching in the face thing, men have been doing this for a long time. They're just doing it out in the open more because they don't have a woman at home to do it. 